All right guys, so I'm sure you can tell by the title, we're going to be installing a three inch spindle lift on Larry. Wow, that sounded like very abrasive. I kind of felt bad. Um, but we're gonna be installing a three inch spindle lift, but before we get them out of the box, show y'all what we got. First, thing's gonna do, first thing we're gonna do is jack this thing up, take the wheels tires off and go to town with some PB Blaster because this truck has a lot of miles. It's 20, over 20 years old. I'm gonna try not to break any bolts off but there's no promises when you got that kind of age and rust on a vehicle. So to prevent that, first thing we're gonna do, jack this thing up and just go to town with some PB Blaster, try to loosen everything up. All right, so I almost forgot, that would have been bad. We need to measure this to see how much lift we actually gain. So from the ground, from the ground right there, about 33 and a half, a little bit under that. 36, a little bit under. So as you can see, we're a little rusty, but you know, 20 plus years will do that to you. And this is honestly probably gonna make the truck ride so much better because we got new shocks and it's just gonna be nice. So we're gonna hit all these things that we have to take apart. This is a three inch rough country spindle lift. And for those new spindle lifts are basically just for your two wheel drives in most cases. And if you can see this same thing, this piece right here is mounted right here behind this. But this is much taller. This is mounted in a slightly different location. And so this is gonna basically open the gap between this top A arm and the bottom in order to give us a lot more ground clearances. So a lot of two-wheel drive guys, Titans, Tacomas, I'm sure Tundra guys run them as well, um, but you really see it a lot on Titans and Tacomas. They got two-wheel drive trucks, they'll run these spindle lifts, and they'll be absolutely huge. You can even run them on like OBS Chevys and stuff. They make them for pretty much everything, but they're, they're, they're real popular for Titans and Tacomas. Um, they basically give your two-wheel drive a ton of ground clearance. There's no reason to do a drop bracket lift on a two-wheel drive because you don't have a differential drop. Sure, it's a direct bolt-on, it's easy to do. I get it, it's gonna give you more lift to run bigger tires and stuff, but your spindle lift's what's gonna give you a ton of ground clearance. It's gonna look good. You're not gonna see anything hanging down from the front. You're gonna have a lot of ground clearance and it's just, it's gonna be awesome. So now we got some good front and rear shocks because I'm sure these are 100, 200,000 mile clapped out ones. And so that's gonna be awesome. This, this honestly should really improve our ride of the truck once we get everything aligned it, it, it i'm excited so we're definitely gonna use these definitely use these and then also in the kit we did have some bigger blocks which i don't let's take a peek real quick i don't even recall what size blocks are on here from the factory okay so it looks like there is no blocks here on the factory you can see right here this is the stock one hanging down come over here As you can see, got a bones worth extra right there. All right guys, so we're gonna go ahead and get started on the install. Got some lights set up. Hopefully I can get y'all some good angles and some good lighting so you can really have a step-by-step -step of how to install this. And so let's go ahead and get started. All right, so the brake caliber has got four bolts on it, two that hold this on and then two that hold this on. Go ahead and take these off, 13 millimeter. So, of course, right off the bat, this little flat guy right here, which I'm guessing is what it screws into, is, um, well, that one's all the way out. Uh, it's just free spinning, so the bottom one is not coming loose, so we gotta have to hold those with pliers in order to get that off. So rather than bungee cording or strapping this caliper up, I just Got this old Folgers coffee thing, and we're gonna just lay it right on top of there. Take our brakes out. She's due for a brake job here soon, but we'll do that later. So now, we got these two, I believe they're 18, yes, 18 millimeter socket. You 
can see one up here and then that guy right there and now we can remove this it's easiest just to you know stick things aside stick the bolts back in there so you don't misplace them now we gotta get this cap off if yours has never been off it probably won't have a little indention it might be harder to get off might have to hammer one in there work it around and there we go so right here we've got a carter pin this little security nut thing and then a nut behind that so out of there like that and then i'm just using the instructions right there to sit it on pull a little security nut off one and one sixteenth guy right there it's kind of hard to do one handed mm -hmm. So now we just got to, you don't, I don't think you technically have to remove the dust shield, but it is kind of in the way. So then there's that guy. So now you got three carter pins. Just go ahead and take all the carter pins off. Bottom of your tie rod, this bottom knuckle nut bolt down here, and then the upper one right here. So just go ahead and straighten those out, pull those carter pins out, and it does come with new ones. Bottom of the tie rod, it says 21, I believe. I have a 13 sixteenths. There we go. Just a little bit of leverage is all you need. Just gonna hammer on it till it frees up. So if your truck has ABS, that's this little guy. So we gotta take it out of here. This one is really grimy. Five sixteenth. There she blows. And we will go ahead and take this up off up here because it's not gonna be long enough so we'll just clip the zip tie and then we'll zip this out of the way once we're done but next step is going to be jacking the bottom up they say do it about an inch just to take some of this tension off in order to have space to get the upper and lower ball joints out take it all the way off you want to take it down to where it can drop down when the ball joint breaks free okay once again not all the way off just down to the bottom threads see it popped loose right there this loosens Make sure you don't have tension on it so this can drop down. Right off goes our stock spindle. New spindle on here. Just line the bottom one up and then put your nut on it so that you can kind of just rest it on there because this joker is not light all right now we're putting our ABS module back in Honestly, it, it it doesn't fit in there like it's supposed to, I don't think, in all reality. It does come with new hardware. We'll have to see if it still works because it's got a little indention in the back, but the piece does not slide in there. Obviously, you want to get alignment after this, but from what I'm reading, it really doesn't mess up the alignment much at all. Our 
hub assembly back on. Alright, so we want to put our little locking thing on there. Carter pin. Crud from coming in there. Well, my GoPro ran out of storage apparently, so y'all didn't see me put the brakes on, but that's no big deal. It's just the four bolts, back two, top two. And that's pretty much it. We're gonna zip tie this out of the way. We're also obviously gonna be installing the shocks and struts. All right, so when you take the top of the strut off, that got the top rounded off, but it's even better anyways. There's a nut inside here. They're both three quarter. And you just put one here, it'll hold up against this. And if yours is like mine, it's all rusted and it's hard as crap to get off. But that's the way you hold it. And then you just loosen it up that way. All right, so I was able to jack this up high enough to just pull this out. So just two bolts here. And then your factory one just slides right out. Old, new. And this is holding the tension, so you don't want to really cut this until you get it in there, just in case it's just too long. I doubt mine is because I have the truck jacked up. Just wanna throw the new hardware on there and slide it up in here. So I just need to align it a little better and then we'll put these guys on here, tighten it down and we're installed. So I did the front right without jacking it up and it, it worked even better there because you could line it up with the top before you cut the thing. So you don't even have to jack it up. We're gonna tackle the rear now. They're just upper and lower. And for anyone curious about the exhaust before, you know, anyone ask, true dual, cat back. Bottom, no big deal. The top one, not fun. Cause you have to hold this or it'll spin. Definitely gonna need an alignment. You can you can see the wheels and tires are not equal on each side. But let's see how it rides right off the bat. Definitely feels a lot better being angled back instead of raked forward. The tires on this thing are complete crap, so it doesn't ride very smooth. Definitely smoother than it was already. It's just a little wobbly because of the, the tires being so out of whack. I mean, it rides fairly straightforward. I mean, it's a little, it pulls just a touch to the right, but I'm sure the uh, camper's off on it pretty badly. So we'll definitely do that before wheels and tires, but I'm gonna cruise around a little bit more. Catch up with y'all in a second. Got a couple little bumps here, we'll see how they feel. Dang, it is, it's smooth. It is honestly pretty dang smooth. Not hearing any crazy noises, so that's a definite plus. So I guess she passes the road test for now. So let's get back and really check out what it looks like. All 
All right, well, here she is. Figured I'd have them all out here, a little comparison. So she's pretty decently tall for a two wheel drive, three inch spindle lift. I mean, she's every bit as tall as both of them and has more ground clearance than both of them. So that's one of the benefits about a spindle lift, obviously. We've got all the ground clearance, whereas, I mean, these are just level trucks, so they're all relatively similar. A lot more than the Dirty Max. Three inch on baby squat, but you can just see the spindle lift just gives it a lot more kind of pre-runner look for sure with all that ground clearance. Nice and smooth up under there. It does poke the front tires out some, as you can see, so you know wheel spacers will be pretty much needed, but once we get the uh, wheels and tires on here, I think she's gonna fit just, just fine with these other two guys. So install was pretty straightforward, nothing too crazy. Just some bolts that were not fun to get to. And uh, so we got all new shocks new spindles and it's honestly sitting pretty right obviously we got you know midge matching tires right now but we will soon change that i'll have to get an alignment which i'll probably wait until the wheels and tires come in just so we get a you know pretty perfect alignment on this thing but overall spindle lift i've always wanted to do one i, I have no issues with two-wheel drive trucks it's just how you present them and what you do with them so two four-wheel drives and a two-wheel drive and it's just crazy how much more i mean that just looks so much beefier all right so there we are right about 37 so i don't even remember what it was before i'll put it in on the screen right here see how much we actually gained three inch spindle lift install fairly straightforward nothing too crazy we'll see obviously do a long-term review once i get some miles on it but initial thoughts it looks a million times better it drives really well it drives better than it did so definitely leave some feedback let me know hopefully y'all are you know enjoying larry i'm enjoying larry so so i'm gonna quit rambling <laughs> i'll see y'all in the next one